Learn about the strides female entrepreneurs of color are making. Be inspired by their story and enlightened by their leadership insight and advice. Welcome to She Leads Podcast, Season 5, Episode 7. I'm your host, Nicole Walker, a mother, businesswoman, and leader. Our guest for today is Akia Red. Akia Red is a mental health advocate, author of Be Free, Be You, and founder of Real Girls Heart. In early 2016, Akia was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. After hiding her condition out of fear and shame, Akia quickly realized it was only getting worse, affecting her physically to the point of a nervous breakdown. It wasn't until she acknowledged the situation with her loved ones, seeking out treatment from her therapist and doctor, that things started to get better. As a form of self-expression and healing, Akia Red created her own blog, sharing her feelings about mental health and authenticity. The flow of support she received from the community compelled her to create Real Girls Fart, a space to empower and equip women with the necessary tools to use their voices and become their best, most authentic selves. Akia uses her life experience and mental health disorder to help women find their voice and let it out. These goals are central to her new book, Be Free, Be You. She is the official sponsor of Nationwide Children's Hospital on Our Sleeves Movement. Without further ado, Leadership Empowerment with Akia Red. All right. So Akia, welcome to She Leads Podcast, Leadership Empowerment for Women of Color. We appreciate you blessing us with your insight today. Well, thank you, Nicole, for having me on the show. I am so delighted to be here. You're welcome. So I read your bio, and I want to say kudos to you for coming out about your mental health struggles, for also taking the steps to heal and grow, and as a result, for creating a space to empower and equip women with the tools needed to be their best selves. I think this is awesome and very much needed. Yes, thank you so much. It has been quite the journey, Nicole. Really, it has over the last few years. It all started as a blog, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just more and more women were connecting with me through my story and how I came to be diagnosed and just how open I was being about the whole process deciding to be medicated. And so it has been a journey, a wonderful journey, but a journey nonetheless. Okay. Thank you. All right. So are you ready to talk about leadership? I am ready to talk about leadership. Let's get into it. All right. So I myself feel that every person is a leader in one shape or form, whether they realize it or not. Would you agree, Akia? I would definitely agree. I've always had that take charge kind of attitude. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very uh, justice-minded person. So even as a little girl, deep down in my heart, I could always feel like I was a leader and that I wanted to make a change in the world. I didn't know what that looked like at the time, but I knew that I wanted to do something to make a change. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. So I think you may have answered my next question, but I'll ask it just in case you have anything else to add. So the next one is, when did you realize you were a leader and what or who helped you to come to this realization? So my father was very instrumental in my life in terms of pointing out the leadership qualities in me. Mm -hmm. At the time as a little girl, I absolutely hated how hard it seemed, but he would always just say, you're a leader. You're not a follower. You have been born to make change in this world. And that's what you're going to do. And again, we didn't know what it would look like or how I would make those changes. But from the time I was a little girl, even until my young adulthood, I constantly was receiving that type of affirmation and messages. 
Okay, thanks for that. I love that. And I do think you are fortunate to receive that affirmation and that encouragement from a young age, because unfortunately, we all, all individuals don't receive that. And that is instrumental and in helping those leaders or individuals know and embrace their leadership at an early age. So that's really awesome. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it comes across as, you know, that's too hard or this was difficult growing up like that. And it was at times, but I am grateful. That's the lesson that I think I took from growing up like that is that even though it was difficult sometimes being told always that I was a leader when I didn't want to be a leader, you just learn to be grateful for those moments Mm -hmm. when you come into your adulthood. Yes, I agree. I agree. Okay. So in my upcoming book, The Code of Leadership, The If Then Process, I outline my experiences Mm -hmm. and lessons that have helped me to become a better leader with the intention of helping others do the same. Akia, can you share what you would consider to be your code of leadership and why? Listen more, talk less, Mm -hmm. be present in the moment, Mm -hmm. and ask questions. Mm. Okay. Thank you for that. I love that. I love that. Yes. Listen more, talk less and ask questions. Right. And I think that ask questions, I'll just touch on that uh, one. Right. Ask questions to me is sometimes overlooked. Right. And unfortunately can be viewed negatively for whatever reason. Like I think of like sometimes I go back and forth with my daughter because I ask her questions and she answers sometimes defensively. And I'm like, wait, calm down. You know, like I'm just asking, you know, yeah. or even with talking to some people, they'll say, oh, that's a dumb question. But it's like, to me, no question is a dumb question. And, you know, you can't assume what individuals know. Right. So a question is obviously right. for clarity, you know, and then too, right. You can't assume or you shouldn't get defensive about questions because, you know, a person is just trying to gain understanding. Right. So I love that you highlighted that. Well, I have this. You know, I just had this motto, I think, in my journey, especially with, you know, the mental health journey in general, the more curious you are, because mm-hmm. that's really another word for asking questions, mm-hmm. the more curious you are with your past and, you know, what exactly is or has triggered you, what happened to get you to this point. If you don't ask yourself those questions, if you're not curious with yourself about those types of things, then you will really not get that far in your journey, honestly. So I've learned that and I've kind of taken that into my business, being a leader in the community, being a mom to my kids, a a wife to my husband, is just being curious and asking the question. I, as in, a child, I was always told, you know, curiosity killed the cat. Mm. Well, I think that that is like the silliest thing that you can all, you know, you could ever tell anybody because then that stops a person from asking questions when really curiosity does not kill the cat. If you don't ask questions is what kills the cat. Mm. I like that. Okay. Thank you. So I look, I'm just going to paraphrase that. Right. So lack of knowledge kills the cat, right? Not the attainment or the acquisition of knowledge. So I love that because I do believe that if you don't continue to learn and continue to grow, you are what I would call the walking dead, right? You're, you're basically dead on the end. You're not growing and you're not learning. So thank you. I love it. Okay. So so I believe all leaders experience failure. I myself, I don't like to consider them failures. I like to consider them lessons, take more of an optimistic view. But Akia, can Mm -hmm. you share your view on failure and tell us what it means to you? Well, what's funny is that you and I share the same exact view Mm -hmm. on failure. I don't think that there is really failure. I think that there are only learning experiences. Yes. And I think that if, if anything, if I, let's just say somebody twisted my arm and said, you have to come up with a definition of failure. You have to subscribe this this meaning to failure, what does that mean to you? Then I would simply say not trying. Mm, I love it. Mm -hmm. So yet yet again, it's, as you put it, that optimistic spin on what failure is. So it's not really a failure. It's a learning lesson. And then if you really made me, if you really forced me, I would say failure, true failure is not trying. 
because you don't want to fail. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. A hundred percent. Okay. So Kia, can you share one time you failed as a leader and tell us what you learned from that experience to help you become a better leader? Yes. So unfortunately, I have many of those stories. So <laughs> right. You know, I do think that people people benefit more so though when you share those stories than when you share your trophies, exactly. right? Because yeah. you know, it's just yeah, they want to see that moment of authenticity and transparency. And mm-hmm. so, from where I sit, there have been many times, Nicole, where I have overscheduled. Mm -hmm. overcommitted, Mm -hmm. Mm overpromised so much to the point where I underdelivered. And for me, not being able to perform according to what I've promised is a huge issue to me and a trigger for me. Mm -hmm. And so that has been something that I have dealt with in my journey as a leader. And I think that I've learned how to be intentional with what I fill my calendar with so that I can say, yes to the right thing. Okay. Yes, I love that. And I find that answer very interesting, right? Because although, like with what you said, with over-scheduling and over-promising, right? Like what you were doing was something for the good, like with good intentions to help others to be there, right? But yet it still can be deemed as a failure because when you don't take the time to really account for whether this is possible, you know, then of course it's, you know, not delivering, but your intentions were good. So I love the fact that even though it was something good, it could come across as something bad. So just shedding a little bit of light on that, that we have to be careful to make sure that even though our intentions are good, we are being smart with the decisions that we're making and taking everything that we need to take into consideration before making those commitments. Absolutely. Because as a leader, if, you know, we all have been on the airplane before. We hear the stewardess come on and she says, Mm -hmm. if the cabin pressure drops, make sure you put your oxygen mask on first before you secure the mask of other people. Mm -hmm. What I take from that or my takeaway is you've got to help yourself first before you help anybody else. So if you overcommit yourself or overextend yourself, not only are you not practicing or able to practice good business and, you know, promote your brand in the best way possible, but also you're putting your own self in jeopardy, Mm. your well-being in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. And so I think as leaders, sometimes we have to keep that in mind that it's only from a full cup that we can actually give to other people or be a blessing to other people. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, what's in my cup is for me. The overflow is what I give to everybody else. Exactly. Thank you for highlighting that because that is so <laughs> true and something that, you know, it took a while for me to to realize that as well. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Akia, do you feel it's easier, or harder, or requires the same effort to be a female leader in the entrepreneur ecosystem and why? Wow, Nicole, that's a loaded question. It, <laughs> it, you know, it's... <laughs> That's a loaded question, especially in the face of everything that we are experiencing now as a nation. Mm -hmm. I would say two things to that question. First off, I think on an optimistic note, this is a great time for women because I believe that we're going to see now and even in the future, more women come to the forefront Mm -hmm. and not being afraid to stand up for what's right, use their voices, not be treated unfairly or not allow there to be inequality. So I think they're going to be, because of that boldness, more of us are going to band together, join together. There are going to be more opportunities that are created for us, I believe, out of that, or what I choose to believe, I should say. Mm -hmm. However, I have to also say that as a woman, we have many hats that we have to wear and roles that we have to play. We are mothers. Mm -hmm. Some of us are wives. Mm -hmm. We are businesswomen. We are entrepreneurs. And it's like, 
I heard this quote and I don't and I don't mean for it to sound, you know, any type of way. If it comes across sounding sexist, I don't mean it that way. But I heard someone say that men are like waffles and women are like spaghetti. And basically what they were saying is that men can compartmentalize like in waffles. They have all these compartments Okay. where women we have a tendency to like. You know, a lot of things kind of enmesh together. You mm. know, there's one thing that affects another thing. And it's just, it's not even a bad thing. It's just the way that I think we were created. And I have seen that, maybe not true for all women, but I know for me, I am certainly like spaghetti. Yes. I definitely, you know, my work life, if my personal life isn't going right, sometimes it can spill over into my work life and the effort and then over committing and I'm not taking care of myself. I don't have that ability to be able to turn it on or turn it off. Some women do, but I think in that way, it takes more effort. Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. I, I agree with both of your points, like wholeheartedly agree with both of your points and I can relate to what you said. And I love what you said, right? Because I never heard that as far as men are like waffles. Women are like spaghetti. (laughs) But I love a metaphor and something that can give me some kind of visual picture, right? And that actually reminds me of a meme I saw one time. I mean, and this is in relation to (laughs) emotions, but it was men and women just showing a difference, right? Because I do believe that women are a lot more complex than men and that women oftentimes carry a bigger load than men. Yeah. So, like the meme was, it said a man's day versus a women's day. And the man's day mm-hmm. was shown in emoji for like all, it might have been smiles or maybe it was smirks. It was all like the side smirk emoji with like one other one, which the other one may have been a, I don't even remember, but one other one was a difference. I'm talking, it was a display of let's say 20 plus emoji. And then the woman's day yeah. was every emoji that they had in the, selection like every single emoji yeah a woman's day yeah. in comparison to what was a man's day you know and and when you take a step back and really take that into consideration looking at most people you can see that you can actually see that and understand it and realize that it is real right so in taking that into consideration yes things for women can be doesn't always have to but can be a lot more difficult than men so thank you yeah, it, it definitely is. It's it's funny. I'll, I'll a little quick, you know, personal story. So as a woman, I go out of town for business. And let's just say my kids are in school. I've got to coordinate. Even when I'm all the way in Timbuktu, I've got to coordinate how they're going to get to school, from school, to practice, from practice, what they're having for dinner. I'm not even here at home. <laughs> but we've got to make sure that all of that is coordinated. Mm-hmm. And... You could be all the way on the other side of the country, yet Susie can't find her sock. Let's call mom. But dad could be right there. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And guess what? And mom knows where the sock is. And mom is going to handle getting everybody where they need to go. And so, yeah, I mean, it does. We are, listen, we are phenomenal beings. Yes. Yes, we are. Thank you. Okay, so productivity is a hot topic right now, as it should be. Mm -hmm. Many Mm -hmm. people want to know how to do more with less and be efficient. As a successful leader, this is a must. Akia, do you have any productivity tips to share with our listeners? Wow. Here you go again, Nicole, asking (laughs) me all of these loaded questions. My goodness. So, obviously... We are, as a society, we have less and less time, right? Uh, We just, you know, are so busy. But I would say make the most of your time. For me, I hired a virtual assistant to do all of the big things that I can't do. They, They seem like very small, but really they're big things because they're, they're big because they take up a lot of time, Mm -hmm. like going through emails and like responding to people sometimes, like sometimes I can do it, but other times I get so overwhelmed and I get sidetracked again because I'm like spaghetti, right? I just said Mm -hmm. that. So Mm -hmm. like, I'm like trying to respond to emails early in the morning and then I have a, you know, I have an appointment that I need to take my child to or something like that. So I think 
it's all based on the individual. It's not going to be one size fits all. And I think actually sitting down and maybe like getting out of your head and getting onto paper your actual needs for your business, both personally and professionally. And when I was selecting my virtual assistant, like I went through this whole process of, okay, what are the things that I want to have more time to do on my own so that I don't have to hire anybody to do? Mm. And then what are the things that, you know, I could really do without doing that I want to pay someone that they could probably knock it out in half the time that I could because they won't have the distraction. Mm -hmm. And so I really sat down with myself, wrote out a great list of what it was that I needed and what I wanted. And then I hired my virtual assistant and it's been the best thing that I could have ever done for myself, honestly. Okay. Thank you. I love that. Yes. And I do, I have heard and, you know, do agree that delegation is key, especially in being a entrepreneur and or a business person or even a person in general, right? Delegations can be key for you as a mom, you know, where you need to get someone to pick your child up from school one day because of whatever. But the importance of delegation and keeping your sanity and, and being productive and getting everything that you need to get done and done in excellence is super, yeah. super, super important. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. Okay, so Akia, can you share an experience that blessed your leadership and tell us about the outcome or the takeaway that you learned? Yes, I can, actually. I think when I actually started blogging a few years ago, and I wasn't sure how it was going to work. I was new to the whole blogging game. Actually, telling my, finding my voice and telling my truth and learning that and valuing my own opinion and learning that other people valued what I had to say on certain topics. I think that really touched me as a leader. I think kind of having those things happen to you, affirm yourself and affirm those beliefs that you've always held about yourself. Like maybe you always known that you were a leader, but when you have somebody else kind of say, man, that really, what you said really blessed me or what you said really impacted me. That affirmation makes you feel so much better in what you're doing that that does bless what you're doing. It makes you feel better about what you're leaving with the world. Okay. Yes, I do, do, do agree with you. Affirmation is super, super, super important to me. And it's so funny, like, um, I can think of just times in my work career where I would be responsible for something. And my thing is, is this valuable? Like, are people even using it? Because number one, I don't want to waste my time, <laughs> you know? And number two, <laughs> yeah. you want to stand for something, right? You, We all want to, I think at the core, all humans really want to help and be a part of something important. So I love how you, like you said, you had to start from finding your voice like that. Right there, yeah. I think is a whole podcast episode in its own, you know, of uh, finding your voice and then having the courage to tell your truth and then believing in what you have to say. Like that's, you know, being able to trust yourself and, and be okay. And then to have people tell you like you're on the right track. Like that just, that just makes the circle complete. So it, it definitely does. I know that it did for me for sure. Um, it definitely made me. A better, a better leader. I think when you have, when you have a great view of yourself and what you're doing, and then you also understand what you're doing well, mm -hmm. and you continue to do that, and and not try to be all things to all people, but you do what you really do well. Mm -hmm. I think that that is just so beneficial, and it is a blessing for you to continue to do it. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. So, Akia, can you offer our listeners the best advice you have as a leader? or have ever received from a leader and tell us how you've implemented it into your life? Yeah, I would say have people love you. Like <laughs> love over fear any day. That's what I would say. Like if people love you, Nicole, they will give you the world. Mm. And then they feel or they believe that you love them and that you truly want what's best for them and you buy into them 
they most definitely will buy into you because people want to be seen and they want to be heard above and beyond all else. No matter what line of work you're in, people that are working for you or helping you, they want to be seen. They want to be heard. They don't want to be fixed. So they know if you're there to see them and hear them, they'll give you the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with this so much. And it's so funny, like this is one of my passion subjects, so to say, right? Because it's mm-hmm. that buy-in, right? It's getting that buy-in from individuals yeah. where it, it, a lot of times is buy-in is more important than money. Some people care more about being a part of something that they believe in or they can relate to opposed, even opposed to money. And like you said, with fear. So that's sort of like, oh, thinking of, oh, I have to listen or I'm going to lose my job. Like in that case, you're going to get a person's minimal effort, maybe, maybe moderate, but you definitely won't get their full effort. But like you said, when a person loves who you are, believes in what you stand for, they will work for you as if they were working for themselves. They will support you as if they were supporting themselves. And it just makes everything so much better, like you said. So I agree. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. So Akia, you made it to the finish line. How do you feel? I feel fantastic. I do. I really feel fantastic. I am so grateful to have been able to talk about leadership and helping, you know, other women find the leader in them because we all have one inside of us somewhere. Mm-hmm. And there's all we all have a thing. So I feel so happy to have been able to share those little nuggets that I've learned along the way today. Okay. Thank you. I love what you said. Find the leader in them, right? Because that's really the basis of one of the reasons I started this podcast. And that's sort of what I've struggled with for a lot, a long time in my life is, you know, finding the leader, respecting the leader, right? And just moving forth in that space. So I just appreciate you pointing that out because I didn't even think of putting those words together, but I like it. Yes, exactly. All right. So, Akia, I want to thank you again for being our guest on She Leads Podcast, Leadership Empowerment for Women of Color. But before we part, do you want to give our listeners your contact information or mention any events, products, services, and or ventures that they would benefit from knowing about? Yes, absolutely. So you can follow me on Instagram at, at Real Girls Fart. I have all kinds of positivity quotes, just daily thoughts, meditations, all kinds of things. Um, As we discussed, I am a mental health advocate so for women and children. And my book, Be Free, Be You, just released June 18th. So you can purchase that on Amazon.com. And yeah, I mean, there's, I'm going on tour at some point this fall. So if you check my Instagram, I'll have the cities that I'll be going to. And maybe if I'm coming near you, you can come and check me out. Okay. Well, thank you, Akia. Congratulations on your book release. Yes. And hopefully you'll be coming somewhere close to Tampa because I'll definitely check you out. Yes, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. Okay. Well, thank you again. We appreciate your insight today. All right. Thank you for having me, Nicole. I really enjoyed this interview with Akia, and I hope you did as well. I agree with Akia's advice to be present in the moment. With all of the distractions of today, this can be challenging. However, it is essential that we learn to focus on what's really important at the time. Mindfulness is another word that means being in the moment. Learning to control our minds from wandering is how we can be mindful of what's happening around us. Living in the moment allows us to live a happy and healthy life. If you want to reduce stress, decrease anger and fear, then be mindful of your focus. A quote by Eckhart Tolle reads, realize deeply that the present moment is all you ever have. Make the now the primary focus of your life. I admire Akia's realization that she was doing herself and others a disservice 
by trying to be everything for everyone. When we overextend ourselves, we limit our ability to show up the way we intend. Akia referenced the directions we receive when on an airplane as our guide to also taking care of ourselves on a daily basis. On a plane, we are told to put our oxygen mask on first before helping those around us. And this is what we must do in life as well. Trying to be everything for everyone leads to exhaustion, which makes us useless for ourselves and others. As Akia stated, we need to be intentional with what we put on our schedule and conscious of the commitments we make to ensure we are not trying to do too much. A quote by Paulio Colio reads, when you say yes to others, make sure you are not saying no to yourself. I can relate to Akia's experience with finding her voice, telling her truth, and valuing her opinion as I experienced the same. For me, this was a long and hard journey with a priceless outcome. It's a great feeling when you believe in yourself. As with Akia, I also enjoy when my thoughts and ideas are valued and appreciated by others. For me, it serves as a confirmation that I'm on the right path. It also helps to keep my confidence up, which is needed every now and again. A quote by Neil Gaiman reads, the one thing that you have that nobody else has is you, your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. So write and draw and build and play and dance and live as only you can. Nicole Walker's takeaway for this week. Akia mentioned the importance of asking questions and being curious about ourselves. The more we know about ourselves, the more effective we are at leading our lives. According to Akia, we should be curious about our past, our triggers, and the occurrences that take us to certain places. Having this knowledge of ourselves is the foundation to making the best decisions for our lives. Getting to know yourself is not always easy, as you may discover things that you are not pleased with. However, it is necessary to make the changes required to be and do better. I will make it my business to continue to ask myself questions as I want to know all about me. I will be curious to understand why I behave certain ways and what leads me to those behaviors. My goal is to be and stay whole, and I know I must continue to get into me for this to happen. A quote by Michelle Sandlin reads, there is no greater journey than the one you must take to discover all the mysteries that lie within you. And now we have Nicole Walker's Leadership Challenge of the Week. My leadership challenge for you would be to think about the one thing that you can take away from this episode and adopt into your life. I know it's hard to absorb too much information at one time, and it's even harder to try and implement too many changes at once. When I attend a training or listen to podcasts, I am to walk away with at least one thing that stuck out to me and one way that I can change as a result. I challenge you to do the same. Don't forget to subscribe to She Leads Podcast for first access to future episodes. And also like and share this episode of She Leads Podcast entitled Find Your Voice with Akia Red. Thanks. And until next time, be empowered and empower on.